Hello everyone, DM Johnny here from Dungeons and & Dice, and today we're going to go over 10 items you can add to your campaign, 10 magical items I should say, you can add to your campaign for your paladins. Let's get started. Coming in at number one, um, I think lists that have four or five weapons on them are very lazy, so I'm going to just give you three weapons that you can do for your paladin flavor-wise. First off, Moon Touched Longsword, Greatsword, whatever, whatever your paladin is using, this is mostly for flavor. When you draw the blade, it's got like a light 15 foot radius or something like that. And I actually had a little bit of trouble because I've been told a few different things, but I couldn't find it on D&D Beyond. Like it's supposed to, this is what it's supposed to do. It's a magical weapon, but it's not plus one. What it does is if like you're fighting a werewolf and they're resistant, you know, to anything that's not silvered or magical, it still affects them. So for the purposes of getting through resistances, it counts as magical but it's not a plus one weapon. It's mostly for flavor, like I said, it's an easy thing you can hand out early and you won't have a problem with it. Uh, the next weapon uh, for the first thing is gonna be the Sun Sword. I believe that's what it's called. And that is, I, this might be what you stop at. When you draw this thing, whew, big old blade of light, literally sunlight. It's in Curse of Strahd, it's in Out of the Abyss. Um, I think it's might be in a couple other campaigns as well. It also generates light, but what it does is when you strike with an un it does radiant damage too, very important. When you strike an undead, you do an additional D8, let's just assume it's a longsword, um, of radiant damage to them, which isn't too bad until you realize like, okay, on a crit, that's 2D8, plus my paladin's divine smite, which is at least 3D8 on an undead. So you see what I'm saying? It starts stacking really, really crazy. Uh, this is where I normally would pump the brakes and be like, this is your weapon for the rest of the game if you want it. However, for the DMs like me who get a little bit wild and like to experiment stuff, there is the uh, the Holy Avenger. This is like the be-all, end-all, paladin, anti-undead uh, weapon. Um, it is just like a normal uh, longsword, except it's plus three, which is huge. Uh, when you strike an undead, it does 2d10 additional radiant damage. So let's again, let's just assume you crit, that's 4d10 on an undead. And then by the time they get it, what are they gonna have? Third or fourth level spells? You know what I mean? Then you divine smite at that. So you have what, four or five D8? So you're looking at four D10, five D8 on a crit, or no, even more than that on a crit. It's an insane weapon. I, I did give it away in my Waterdeep campaign, which we're playing right now, but that was literally like 175,000 gold after they got done with the heist. Um, I will say this much, I put them up against a bunch of vampires and now they haven't fought any undead. It is borderline game breaking, so be careful if you hand it out. I would say like, honestly, level 12 plus for this. All right, and now that we've just went with uh, you know, a one-handed weapon, we might as well jump into shield. One of the one of the paladins, for a second item here, one of the paladin's weakest things in my mind is its movement. It's not very fast. The paladin is never very fast, especially if you're a dwarf. They don't really have, you can get Misty Step if you go into Oath of the Ancients, but that's a level two spell slot and you don't get a lot of spell slots. So what I recommend here is, this is a homebrew item, by the way, you can go check our Patreons, $1 to get access to all our magical items. Uh, and it's, it's called the Blink Shield. And what it does is when you are hit, you get to use your reaction to, I shouldn't, I guess I should call it Misty Step Shield. You use your reaction to Misty Step. Now, if the target that hits you is within the 30 feet of the Misty Step and you land near them, you can also then use your attack of opportunity. So what this shield is, is it allows you to get a little bit closer to those casters or ranged people that Paladins really have a little bit of issue getting to. So. That's what I recommend for the blink shield, reaction, you blink to them, hey, you can also use your attack of opportunity if you're within range, but it does they don't have to be within range. It's 30 feet wherever they wanna go. I just like giving them the extra option as a reaction because, well, you know, reactions and bonus actions, they don't have a ton of them. So yeah, hand that one out, pretty simple. For our third item, we are going to go with the Amulet of the Devout. I actually think this is, this is probably better on like a cleric, but it, it's still really good on a paladin. So what this does is it gives you plus one to your spell attack, I don't even know if Paladins have spell attacks because everything is just off of them striking. So uh, yeah, I don't, I, and you're not gonna, it's not going to count for your melee weapon. It specifically says spell attacks. Um, the other thing it does is it gives you a plus one to like, let's say you use uh, what is it? Like banishing strike and they got to make a wisdom saving throw or whatever it is. Um, if you're, if the DC is 15 with this equipment it becomes a 16. That's actually somewhat useful. But the real thing, the, the thing I like it for is the fact that you get to use your channel divinity again for free. That's uh, that's big. Channel Divinity is one of those things as a paladin. Um, the Oath of the Ancients one is like you hit them and like lines come up and it's, it, they're restrained. Granted, it's a strength check, but again, 
guess what? Now it's plus one because of this amulet. It, like I said, it's a little bit better on clerics, but for, or the, uh, the Conquest, the Oath of the Conquest Paladin. They get to do a terror thing where it just frightens everybody. Getting to do that multiple times a day, I promise you, your Paladin is going to be thankful for having it. So just give it to them, but only make it plus one. Uh, obviously down the line you can improve it, but don't get wild with it. Trust me, this will get out of hand very quickly. Number four, and this is covering another weakness of the Paladin, and that is uh, its AoE damage, rather its lack of AoE damage, uh, area of effect. So we're going to do the Horn of Blasting. What this is, you know, I like horns. Um, so you, you blow it, and it does, I think one of my chickens just, yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's going wild right now. Probably found something in the dirt. Anyways, Horn of Blasting. Um, what it does is basically anything, it's a 30 foot cone, so it's like doo, 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 and spreads out. Um, and it's 5d8 thunder damage and like 10d8 if it's made out of crystal or whatever like that. Uh, DC 15 constitution saving throw, actually really high. Uh, the only downside is, and you might want to adjust this, I personally do, is there is a 20% chance this thing will blow up on you and do, I believe it's 10d8, it's either 10d8 or 10d6 um, fire damage to whoever blows the horn. Uh, I reduce that, I don't like 20%, that's really high. Like, um, 20% is the red ring of death in Xbox 360. That is unacceptable. So I make it so they roll a D10 on a one, it explodes. So be careful when you hand this out because you are potentially handing something out your player will literally kill themselves with. Uh, obviously if they have fire resistance, it's whatever. Another thing I like to do, as long as they don't just pick it up and blow it, like they know what the item is, they know it's gonna potentially blow up. So I'll let them use their reaction uh, or bonus action, some, some sort of action to then do a deck save to take half damage when it explodes. Obviously, if you know it's gonna explode, you blow it, you're getting ready to throw it anyway. So um, I think it's just a really cool little item. I, I don't remember which one this one was added in, but I got it once and I only used it once and I regret it because I really like doing it. A 30 foot cone's really big. So yeah, hand that out to a paladin that's willing to take some risks or like a tiefling paladin would be perfect because they already have fire resistance. Anybody that's got fire resistance, it's perfect for. But thunder damage is very rarely resisted. And oh, it's, it also deafens them, which is pretty good. Number five, I'm gonna go ahead and do another plug for our Patreon. This is a $3 tier it's set, set bonuses. I, I, I know, I know, I said, don't fill this up with a bunch of weapons. I promise you this is the last weapon. This is a three piece set. It comes with a weapon, it comes with a shield, and it comes with armor. If you're tuned to all three, you get something. If you're tuned to only two, you get something as well. All right, let's get started. The weapon I have named Divine Judgment. Now, you can make it whatever you want. I've made it into like an, a half ax, half hammer. Some people prefer the hammer on a paladin, more classic, but I also like the ability to someone having slashing if that's their preference. This is a pretty simple one. It is a magical weapon, it's plus one. Again, adjust as you see fit, but it allows you to cast your Divine Smite once per day for free. Doesn't specify a level. You cast it at level two, guess what, buddy? That's free. This is the Clutch Paladin spell. Divine Smite is the it's the reason you become a paladin, quite frankly, is because you want to see those damage numbers. So allowing them to do it for free, especially on a paladin when they have so few spell slots already, it's just, it's good. So that's the first part of the set. All right, the second part, second part here, that's going to be our chest plate, and that is going to be the, well, the armor of the faithful. Whatever you want to do heavy armor wise. I normally do plate, but it's up to you, like I said. And this one's really simple. When you get hit, Use your reaction to cast Bane on whatever hits you. It's like a DC 13 or something like that. You can do it once per day. Recharges at dawn, easy peasy. I know Bane is normally like an AOE. You can cast it on multiple things, but this is a very specific, you get hit, you cast it as a reaction for free. Third thing, that is our shield. That is the Sacred Sentinel. This one I like, um, again, it is a shield. It's only gonna give you plus two. I really, I've, I gave out a plus one shield one time. I'll never do it again. Um, they, Paladins get insane AC as it is. They don't need extra AC. That being said, it, the shield does give extra AC in the form of Shield of Faith. You can cast that once per day for free, and you can cast it on whoever you want. Um, however, it is normally a concentration spell. When you it, it counts as a concentration spell, so you can't cast two of them. But if you get hit, you don't have to make concentration checks because that's that's the magic of the shield. Okay, but it's a set, Johnny. What does that mean? Well, all good sets have a bonus. And we have a two and a three out of three set bonus for this. Two out of three is pretty simple. When you Divine Smite, once per day, you may reroll any of those damage die. That's it, any of them. You can reroll multiple, but whatever the next number is, you have to take that number. 
Second thing, allows your chest plate, assuming that it's attuned, because you could not, you could have shield and sword and then the breastplate's useless. But if you have the breastplate attuned, then you can use Bane twice per day as a reaction, basically. That's it, making it real simple. Um, three out of three, however, if you have everything equipped, you've got the sword, the shield, and the chest plate equipped, first off, your divine judgment becomes radiant damage. It's not just magical, it's radiant, which is flavorful for a paladin, right? That's what you want. Second off, it makes your shield of faith even stronger from your shield because when you cast it on someone else, it automatically casts it on yourself as well. Again, this is once per day, and I know it sounds powerful, but you gotta think about it this way. If they're choosing to use all three pieces of this, they can't be attuned to anything else. So they're they're like, they're spec for combat, not for role play or anything like that. They're going in specifically to smite evil. Like I said, that's a $3 tier over on our Patreon, Dungeons and Dice. We do sets, one set a month. Um, I think we have three or three or four, I'd have to look. But if you're interested in sets, that's another thing we do. Go check it out. Now that I've given you all these combat items and all that stuff, let's do a little bit of role play. Uh, in, in, oh, which in, which light carnival? Well, the, the, the Feywilds one where you go to the carnival. Um, there is an item known as the Dread Helm, and when you put it on, it's, it's purely cosmetic. It just like makes your eyes glow red, which is cool, but let's be real with each other here. Paladins probably aren't gonna want to uh, have their eyes glow red. So I, what I say is like, it's not the, the Helm of Dread. You can name it something else. You can just keep it as that, but I let them ch pick whatever eye color they want. You know, it's like press to digitate. You can just change the color, whatever you want. You know, most of them will do blue. Some of them will do yellow. Maybe they will go with red. You never really know. Um, I just like to give them the options. I don't, it doesn't give any buffs to intimidation or anything like that, but if someone pulls out their freaking moon sword and it glows with holy light, and then they've got like this helm that's got their glowing blue eyes, you know, maybe maybe a bad guy's gonna be intimidated a little more. It's up to the DM, of course, to uh, their discretion at that point to decide if they get advantage or a little buff or whatever like that is. As it stands, it's purely a role play item, but I always like to give players more options, so give it to them. Number seven is an item you probably expected to see. It is the prayer beads. This is a cleric, even a druid. Cleric, paladin, and druid's best friend. So I do recommend sort of like pre-rolling this so your characters, when they get it, you already know what you're gonna have. Cause it can be blessed, that's fine. It can be cure wounds, that's fine. Wind walk's pretty powerful in certain situations, but it's the planar ally that gets a little bit nutty. It is very expensive. I think it's like a thousand gold to maintain it or something, but even having one come down for a turn, could get insane so roll that uh make sure you see everything You're like okay it, it, because remember as a dm it is your job to keep everything balanced so just check that out and be like you know what i don't want them having these two let's just give them searing smite bless and then cure wounds or whatever it is but as i said i don't know a paladin or cleric that's not gonna want this thing so put it in your game for our next item, we are going to go with another homebrew item. If, if you're wondering why the lighting has changed and the appearance and everything, it's because I got just a teensy bit of corruption, so we're just reshooting real quick. Anyways, doesn't matter. This item is actually called Divine Beads, not to be mixed up with Prayer Beads, not nearly as powerful. All these Divine Beads do, they're basically beads you wrap around your arm for a rosary, basically. Uh, all it does is it adds five points to your Lay on Hands pool as a Paladin, so you get to heal five more points or remove one more disease or poison. That's it. Number nine item here is uh, the boots of speed. Again, a, mobility is a problem for the paladin. They just can't get around. They don't have a lot of movement options without misty step. And this basically lets you bonus action double your movement for like 10 minutes or something like that. And I think it's also, and then I believe it's also, I'd have to look, but I'm pretty sure attack of opportunities are, are at disadvantage or something with attack of opportunities as well. The only problem with these boots is you might have to fight with like the rogue or the monk who are like already speed demons and want to be even more speedy. But trust me, it's best on a paladin because they need to get up into the front line, especially when they start getting their auras. And for number 10, we are going to go with Javelin of Lightning. Again, a weakness of the paladin is its AOE. Advantage of the Javelin is you don't have to use Dexterity modifier. Uh, thrown weapons can either be done with strength or dex, so that it's useful on a paladin. And basically what the, it literally turns into a lightning bolt, you throw it and uh, I think it's once per day, it's a uh, straight line, either 4d10, 5d10, something like that. It's a straight line, but again, you're giving the paladin an option of a throwing weapon and a magical one at that, which they're gonna need. If you wanna get crazy with it, you could just do Javelin of the Sun and totally convert that into radiant damage to make it like a little bit more flavorful. Again, it's once per day, um, but I have seen multiple times to my surprise that that little line for lightning bolt or whatever my players have always been able to do cool stuff with it so i like having the line and again it gives the paladin a chance to hit multiple targets 
which is not something they can do. I mean, they have multi-attack, but they don't have a lot of AOE, like I said, and this helps to cover it up. Okay, that's gonna do it for me. There are 10 Paladin items for you to add to your game. Nothing too crazy unless you're planning on adding the uh, Holy Avenger. What you gotta remember is most campaigns only go to about 10. So like giving these nutty items, yeah, I don't get it. Like when I see other lists, it's all they've got like four or five different weapons and I'm like, you would, have you ever played? You would never give someone that. So, but this is my 10 items. If you have an item you like for your Paladins, please leave a comment. If you like the video, leave a comment. Um, you know, whatever. If you want improvements, leave a comment. Just uh, let us know. Check out the Patreon. Check out the Discord. Uh, check out social medias, all that. If you like, And while I got a second here, if you liked what you saw, got what you needed, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Later, Gators.